What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, you saw it. We haven't said anything to each other about the film, which is interesting, because we usually have something to say, whether we give it a yay or nay or something. We haven't said anything. Uh, I saw it on Sunday, Brian. You've seen it twice, correct? That's correct. Um, I'm interested in hearing you what you have to say. By the way, this is a spoiler review. Uh, since you've seen it twice, um, I want to hear your thoughts. Um, I generally liked it. I didn't like it as much as the first one. I liked it better than the second one. Yes. I do think there were several key elements of this film that kind of reminded me of why Marvel became the juggernaut that it was. I thought there were also some elements that were clearly excess and sort of a function of, you know, if James Gunn's going out, he's going out with all the flourishes and I'm going to, I'm going to stuff this movie a little bit more than it needed to be stuffed. Yes. But all in all, I think it was fairly successful and I think it was a pretty decent send off for certainly some of the characters within the crew. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, when we look back on it, we have to say that this was a, you know, for James Gunn, this was a highly successful swing for him and for Marvel, you know, from start to finish. So I'm generally pretty happy with it. And I'm also pretty happy to kind of leave the legacy be and, and move on in, in other directions as it kind of seems like they have set this up to do yes what did you think brian i the only, i was thinking about how i would um talk about this film and i think the simplest way to describe it is, is if you take out all of the jokes this is top shelf mcu for me um where there were moments where i felt um not again not the same old you know what i'm saying like these guys going back and forth um and then there was those moments where you see the genius in james gunn's um directing and vision of certain things there were certain moments in there i think his excellence in action sequences brian is is like when he does it, he do, he does it big, and and is usually each each of those action sequences were pretty good. Yeah. I didn't mind the Adam Warlock sequences, Brian. I just knew what I was getting with that performance, and and we'll talk about that later. But yeah. the jokes in here, if you remove all those things out, there were some jokes that were pretty funny, Brian. Um, but for the most part, I could have done without it, and this movie would have been up there for me because this, to me, I think was top shelf. Yeah, I think I was trying to think through a couple of things. So maybe let's start with the visuals because Marvel visuals have definitely been in the news way too much. I think this did underscore to me the difference of when the director has a strong grasp of what he wants to show you versus this kind of growing report that a lot of what Marvel does when they bring in the indie film directors is kind of say like, you direct the dialogue, we'll handle the look. Mm -hmm. And that's clearly where the criticisms are coming. This is a movie where you can see like James Gunn's flair and his style, mm -hmm. but his control. Like I thought the hallway fight sequence <sighs> is it's there, man. That is like that was dope. Where to slow the where to slow, where to speed, where the pan you have a clear grasp of everything that's happening you get comic style action shot for your heroes and it looks and sounds good like the cgi is good in that sequence it's not, it, that like, was, that's the difference yeah Hit the visuals in that brian i did not everything looked great to me i believed wherever we were that's where we were at you know uh yeah, and I thought like, you know, we spent more time with Rocket and like CGI animals and like there was real, it felt tangible. It felt like there was emotion. There was an actual, an or, you know, almost cyborg animal there. Like Chris so Pratt was dope. You could just tell like 
you know, this Gunn has had a lot of experience with these characters and with Marvel at this point. And I think once he was brought back off the scrap heap, you know, after getting fired off this film, brought back to do it, I think it feels to me like Marvel basically stayed out of his way. Yeah. Like this does feel like it's oh, his yeah. fingerprints start to finish. Yes. And if he wants to go excess, which he did, I don't know if it was always successful, yeah. he was allowed to do it. Yeah. But I think by and large, the set pieces worked. They were creative. It was it was good action. Obviously, you count on him for good music and a little bit of humor in there. But I actually liked these sequences better than the Suicide Squad yeah. sequences. That was my sort of reaction both times. Yeah. And I looked forward to seeing some of these set pieces again the second time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian, I think he did a wonderful job with each of the characters, except for, right? <laughs> the one we knew. Yeah. yeah. Or suspected. One. No, Brian, the one we knew. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. You know what? He missed out on an opportunity to say family instead of, <laughs> I, love I love you guys. guys. <laughs> yes. You should have said family. In that way, we would, I would have gotten a, a, a laugh out of that. Uh, but Groot was dope. Uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Batista was good. Brian, each of the cast members, were, I think, were really done well, Brian. What did you think of all, of, all, all the characters? Were there any ones that you didn't like, except for Adam Warlock, obviously, but were there any other characters you were like, um, like for example, the Sovereign, I feel like, damn, that that went, went to waste, right? When when, yeah. we, when we found out the high evolutionary, but your thoughts on, on the characters here? Um, Well, I think, I mean, like Rocket is the star, Certainly. right? Now, a lot, a lot of that's through flashback, but I think Rocket is clearly the soul of this movie. He's why you care about the mission at all yes and so i think you know even though it's bradley cooper and i think there's another individual who is voicing baby rocket like that i mean that's probably weirdly a, a performance that stands out as like a as a human performance even though it's coming from a, a cgi creature yeah i thought i actually thought um mantis and nebula were were working overtime mm -hmm. and i don't mm -hmm. know if that's because Gunn's just gotten more comfortable writing them as as they've come into the show. Yes. Or whether because they were newer mm -hmm. and had a little more in like they were more stoked to be there. But I felt like this carried on the holiday special of like they're really good. And I feel like they're actually in some ways better than the original Guardians in a lot of the scenes. Now, maybe that's because <clears throat> we've seen the Drax comic act now a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind it, but I kind of was like a little over it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I've seen this a lot. Mm -hmm. It is funny. You, you, you were like Star Lord. He's more of a supporting character in this movie than Certainly. lead, and it made me wonder. Like, is that something Chris Pratt wanted? Like, was he just like, I don't really want to be carrying this film anymore. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of like, I want fewer days on set. Like, or whether was he really just being a team guy and saying like, hey, we. Let's give shine to everyone else before we go out. I heard someone quoting James Gunn. I, I don't know if I was watching Emergency Awesome or one of those guys, but uh, James Gunn was speaking of Rocket was the star from the jump from from Guardians 1. And everybody else was sort of like a supporting character to his story arc. Uh, and um, so I don't think it was uh, on purpose that... Chris Pratt took a little bit of a backseat, but I, I I enjoyed his performance, Brian. I didn't, uh, um, I wasn't ever like, here we go again with him. Because <clears throat> yeah. I expected that sort of performance throughout. But. Well, he was playing it a little differently, right? Yes. He's playing a more like depressed, right? He's lost Gamora, right? They're trying to, he's look, he looks more disheveled yeah. and down on his luck. Yeah. And so he's trying to bring that through. You know, I, I don't think Zoe Saldana had a ton to do. And if I was But being she honest, was I, amazing, I think. But like, I feel like she was more, yeah. So she felt more like she was ca almost cameoing at times. Like, hey, throw a couple fastballs <laughs> here to remind people and then kind of clear out because you're you're sort of still an oddball fit with with this particular crew. But I, I get what you're saying. She reminded me of the Gamora that you would see in the comics. Fair. Like, I think like that's a fair point. Fierce and and didn't care and violent and aggressive. And and, and she really, and the performance really, 
uh, showed that. So I, I enjoyed this performance from her. Yeah. So I think I think it it, do, it did have that feel like everyone understood this was the last act. So they were kind of bringing it, and they weren't really leaving anything in the tank. Mm -hmm. um, high evolutionary. I was fine. thinking about him. Yeah. I mean, he 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 was working hard. <laughs> Yeah. He definitely had like gravitas. Yes. I don't know that the character or the way it was shown is all ultimately all that memorable if I'm being honest. He's more like a means to an end for the story in my mind, but Certainly. But I'd say he's, you know, you hated the guy. Right? Oh I, yeah. I, yeah, you hated the guy and I think that was the point regardless of the um I don't. I don't think it would. Would have, I don't know how. It's the high evolution is a difficult character for me to describe, and he was the mustache twirly evil guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's pure evil. Well, this hits on something that I think was one of the things I liked most about this film, which is James Gunn. He solved a very basic problem, which we've talked about a lot in the more recent MCU projects, which is as they've gotten bigger, more global, cosmic, the stakes have gotten to a point where every freaking movie, mm -hmm. the fate of the universe is at stake. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! If they had done that in this film, I don't think it works. I, I but by agree. James Gunn saying, the mission is to save Rocket, it localized it to where it made perfect sense why only the Guardians would be this motivated yeah. to go after this guy. Yeah. And in order to make there be urgency, you have to both hate and fear the High Evolutionary. It doesn't work, right? If the High Evolutionary is like a popcorn cardboard villain, yeah. there's no urgency. Yeah. And like we know that probably rock. And the thing is, James Gunn is using the leverage of because it's the last movie. Is there a chance I might kill off one of these guardians on the way out? He he has that in his hand, to mm -hmm. where so where he can create this sense of danger in some of these scenes that weren't there, quite honestly, in Guardians Two, to where you're sort of like, yeah, there's a chance that like we know Dave Batista doesn't want to come back. Maybe he's going to get smoked in one yeah, of these scenes. Like you know what I mean? Like I think that always helps you. Yeah. In a way, it helped Endgame, where like you didn't know like who was going to die and who wasn't. Yeah. But I think the high evolutionary's point, like. His whole point is to be over the top cruel in the name of his mission so that you both understand Rocket's dilemma, like danger. Yeah. But then you understand, like, yeah, they're up against this, you know, crazy sort of psychopathic guy, right? So, <laughs> Gun, that's Gun's, that's Gun's strength as a, as a writer, right? Him understanding the stakes properly for these characters. Mm. And I think that's actually, it felt very refreshing for one movie yes. to not feel like the mission was like, Save tied the world. Yeah, to yeah, this yeah. multiversal yes, endgame. Yes, yes, yes. It, it felt very much like a standalone film. And uh, I think this is sort of the movie that uh, was needed, I think, to break us away from all that other stuff that's going on. Uh, so here's the weird thing about that, though. Yeah. This movie was originally supposed to come out in 2020. Okay. So ah, you, yes. If you think about this story in the context of this movie was supposed to cl fairly closely follow Endgame before we got all of this other stuff, it actually makes more sense. Yes, 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 yes. But where we are now, to your point, it really does feel like a breath of fresh air and a return to form because we've been saddled with some subpar product for three years. Yep, yep. Yeah, it certainly felt that way. I felt very satisfied after I saw that movie, Brian. Um, there was one thing, and this is me being picky always. Some of the physics in in in, in that stuff is is kind of like like really space can't be. That's not the way it works. Obviously, Brian, if you're an Adam Warlock fan, you probably hate this movie, Brian. Yeah. You like you waited you waited however many years for this <laughs> exactly man it's like if you are Adam Warlock fanatic you hate this movie and I'm not a fanatic like that I I, I do know of the character and his uh, participation in Infinity Wars and, and I did it before that all happened 
Endgame and Infinity War, I thought, how are they going to be able to bring him in? Or I was always wondering, and finally, after seeing the whole thing, obviously, we didn't see, get to see Adam Warlock. So his purpose now, Brian, seems, uh, I don't know. It's like white vision. Where is he? We know he's out there, but nobody really cares, right? Until yeah. we see Vision Quest, whatever that horrible name for for a show. But what are you? Um, what are your thoughts on Adam Warlock? Yeah, same. I mean, I think the char- I mean, I think the the character was wasted, probably in the way that we suspected it would be. Um, you know, powered down, dumbed down. You know, none of none of the true sort of cosmic or godlike qualities, or even really the intrigue. Or I mean, some of the I mean, they, I guess, loosely incorporated the idea that he he was sort semi evil, but more just yeah. like a henchman, and then he becomes good when he's reborn. But like, you know, that in the comics, that that's much more nuanced, right? Yeah. His progression from good to evil, and how, why he oscillates between the two as he gets older, is, or cha- every time he regenerates, like all that's really different. And like, and of course, if you were to really bring him into the picture, now you're starting to bring in, you know, he's he's more interlocked with like Thanos' backstory, death backstory there's other characters that he's intertwined with that like you know either we've left behind or we've never seen so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this character was really more of a comic relief um which is you know, I, I also found myself being like okay i am not going to extrapolate anything from will bolter's performance yeah, to superman yeah, legacy because yeah. right. james Gunn's told me there's a different movie so i'm not going to judge anything right. based on that but yeah i mean it, it almost reminded me of like a an even sillier, more benevolent vision, version of Nuclear Man. Yes, right? yes, I was thinking. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. Brian, were you disappointed? In, I mean, I haven't seen or heard of any Easter eggs that pointed to, and it's and I and I see why that is now because of what you pointed out. This movie being supposedly should have been released in 2020 so i was hoping to see some easter eggs of galactus or something outside of what's going on and there was nothing to uh the post credit scenes either that really like satisfied me either what your thoughts on those all those things yeah no i think as i said everything about this everything really about this felt like a a sort of fairly comics, true to comics, like ending of a multi-episode story with like the one hook for like, if you were to reboot the Guardians, here's your new team. But not, with no real serious view that it would be yeah. the new, like like if that credit scene, spoiler alert, that has the new Guardians team together, had that scene included what you're describing, that would have tied this movie more back into the broader narrative. So I think they were very deliberately trying to go away from that to the point where I actually thought it was significant that they said Star-Lord would return. Yeah, they didn't yeah. say the Guardians would return. They said Star-Lord would return. So I guess that means Pratt is signing up for more of this and they're kind of going, using him maybe in a little different direction than they they did previously. So that was probably the most interesting thing I noted in, in the whole credit sequence. But everything else to me was like, I did want this to feel somewhat like an ending. That's what they yeah. promised. And so like, I was pretty satisfied yeah, that the I final scenes were more like resolving the, you know, it's like, okay, they all have next chapters in their lives, but it felt like there was completion for most of the characters. And that, yeah. I thought that was positive. So. I'm just tired of the dance sequences, Brian. I'm just. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, you know, that's the thing. When we talk about excess, right? Mm-hmm. There is a lot of comic excess. I think there is also it almost was like James Gunn is like, I'm only going to have a chance to go to Worlds one more time. So it almost felt like we went to like one place too many. Yeah. It was like, you know, and like they can get away with that, but it was like, this was a two and a half hour movie that could easily have been 210. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocket is the MacGyver of the MCU. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no, I liked, I liked, th- those are some of my favorite scenes. Yes. Was like the baby raccoon. Figuring it out. And then the cerebral development and like the physics where he's almost going goodwill hunting yes. like on, on the board with with high evolution i love that yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. this was actually that backstory was i cared about yes 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 so there was a lot of aspects brian i think we can agree that a lot of the good things that we like far outweighed the things that we didn't like uh, most of it was expected we knew that this we knew going in that we were going to get some of this and the good things that he did he did him excellently 
and it overshadowed the things I didn't like. So I think if you're looking for if if you're looking for any sort of Superman read across, because I did think about this after mm -hmm. the fact. I think the best thing I can say about this movie is when it wasn't trying to be funny. He was able to make me feel something. And that's something he does have to carry over into Superman Legacy. Oh, yes. Grander. Oh, yeah. yes. So, like, so those scenes with Rocket where it was with the other animals and that sense of pain and law, like you felt that was not those scenes were not played for laughs. Yeah, like yeah. that was pure drama. And I was like, if he can harness that with Clark Kent, we might be in some business to do some business. Yes, definitely. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. What is it? You want to rate it and rate oh. it and rank it? I'm going to give it out of five. Yeah. I'm going to give it a three and a half. Yeah, I agree. That's exactly where I am. Three yeah. and a half. And it's probably, does it make, I don't think it, does it make your top 10? I don't think it quite made my top 10, but it was like lingering. I'd have to go top through 10. my top 10 and see if it falls under, if, if it can replace one of those. Top, I got to look through my top 10. Um, and see if it's up there. But I, 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 like I said, I enjoyed the parts that I did enjoy, like the memorable parts I remember, the things that he wanted you to feel. I felt them. The the oohs and ahs, he, he's good with that. So this movie was, was done very well outside of the excess, yeah. Um, but again, you get rid of all of that. Yo, this is, people got to understand, this is not funny. The stuff that he, all this back and forth and talking, and, and it's not funny. And it's just a waste of time when I'm sitting there just trying to get to the next thing. Yeah. And that's the frustration I feel when I watch James Gunn's film. Yeah, and I, but I think the other frustration I feel is like, because this obviously was edited in post within the last 12 months at the same time when Marvel's been putting out stuff that looks far worse than this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there being like, you, you, you have no excuse, right? If this movie with some of these scenes can look this tight and this and the colors can look this vibrant, no excuse yeah, for yeah. the way that some of the stuff in Quantumania looks and some of the stuff in Multiverse of Madness looks. And like, you know, it just, it made me almost more angry at that because I was like, it just shows you, you guys have been slipping Hells and yeah. disrespecting your audience when, you know, whatever I think of James Gunn, his comedy i mean he's a talent mm -hmm. and like when placed in his hands and left to his devices shock of shocks the movie mm -hmm. looks fine yeah yeah and we're not hearing anyone complain about that oh, right no. so like the, nobody the reviews are fine they're not as good as the first two but i actually think that's because marvel's not being graded on a curve anymore but nobody i nobody i read in the things was complaining about poor, like terrible cgi yeah. or like weird like you know yeah. lapses in visuals so you know brian is this one of these films that we have described in the past that despite um well not despite but with the trajectory of the mcu heading downhill that these possibly good movies will be overlooked is, is does it fall victim to this absolutely so let's talk box office right so before we get out of here like domestic audience 118 million for the opening weekend that compares to 146 and a half million for guardians 2. that's a large decline for mm -hmm. a movie that i think is better than guardians 2 but is coming at a time where people are dissatisfied and, it, and to put it in perspective this movie's opening weekend was 70 ish million shy of Doctor Strange 2. That's ridiculous. Yeah. When you put when you compare those movies, this ridiculous. Yeah. But it shows you US audiences are like, meh. Now it's interesting, global audiences like this. Yes. Global audience, uh Global Box was actually 290. The ex the estimate was a little south of 250. So the non-US audience really ate this one up. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of interesting to me that that showed that like all it took was a decent movie overseas and the audience came back out and that doesn't even include they didn't really get much of a lift from china because china's not really you know coming out for these things anymore mm -hmm. so that's a strong showing it and and i've seen actually early in the week the holds have been pretty good so this movie isn't going to do a billion dollars <sighs> but it's going to make more money than maybe I was afraid it would make mm -hmm. coming off of the, the quantum media thing. And the word of mouth has been good. The cinema score was back to A. Mm -hmm. First time in a while a Marvel film has been at that level. So people that have gone 
are generally coming home happy and telling their friends, hey, if you haven't, if you've been frustrated by Marvel, yeah, this will remind you of what Marvel's kind of good at. Yeah, or what they're capable of. Yeah, um, yeah let us know. I got to throw one other thing in there. Uh-huh. I, was, I went with a friend who does a very good job of not watching, who's a big comics person, but does a very good job of not watching promotional material. Okay. So we get the Marvel's trailer right before this. <laughs> <laughs> but he hadn't seen it. He hadn't okay, seen okay, either. He hadn't seen any footage. Yeah. So he's watching it, and he turns to me. He's like, "That's awful." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, see, this is the problem." Wow. He's like, "He's like, I don't get it. That looks terrible." And, and the fact that Kevin Feige is out there talking this movie up, Brian, this doesn't look good. It's it, lo- it just feels weird that he's out there trying to really promote this. I don't. Well, I also thought it was weird because, right? So that trailer has, you know, kind of like a Beastie Boys soundtrack, and is trying to be kind of almost hip. It felt like, but it's weird. You play that in front of Guardians, where Gunn is sort of a master of soundtrack, mm-hmm. and. Quite honestly, he's a master of the of the vibe that that trailer is trying yeah, 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 hard yeah, 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 to get yeah, yeah. to, and it almost draws your attention to the fact that like the Marvel's trailer just doesn't get there. And you're like, it ain't gonna be like. I'm not saying Guardians Three is all that. I mean, I'm I'm just saying that's executed to a certain level, and the trailer is just t- uh, for the Marvels is kind of saying like you're getting the, you know, you're getting the very poor person's version of of that. This is sad. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. One other trailer that looked dope was the Transformers, but we talk about that some other time. The Transformers. Oh, oh I, can, I can tell you one other thing. That trailer, <laughs> the promotional material for that has been so good. My <laughs> wife said she wanted to see it opening night. That That's joint, all you need to know. That joint looked crazy. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Nerd Jet Report. The show goes on! Yeah!